What's up, everyone? Before we get to today's show, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, share, download, listen, and whatever other button there is, and leave us a review wherever you do listen. This ensures that we can continue bringing you the great guests and amazing content like we have today. This week's guest, Mauricio Gomez, has been on the mat since the age of four. As a teen, he began training and received his black belt from the legendary Hulse Gracie and went on to open up the very first Gracie Baja Academy in the United Kingdom. Today, we are lucky enough to have Mauricio share his journey, stories of the Gracie family, the unique bond that happens in jiu-jitsu, and what it means to be the father of the man most regarded as the greatest jiu-jitsu competitor of all time, Hodger Gracie. Here is the Roll Radio, with one of the most influential men in jiu-jitsu, and one of only six men to be awarded their black belt from Hulse Gracie, Master Mauricio Gomez. Welcome to Raw Radio. And we are live. Gary, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm good. I'm in a really good mood today. Uh, We have another legend on with us, um, so I'm super excited. But before we get to that, you've got a couple projects that uh, you've been working on that I think we need to talk about briefly. Uh, one is Ask a Black Belt, another little podcast that you have that for some reason you're doing without me. I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> go to Instagram, um, Thomas's Instagram page, drop him a question, and uh, he is answering those uh, on Ask a Black Belt, which is uh, your new podcast and um, everywhere you can get the roll radio. You can get that as well. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you want to add. No, no, that's it. Just drop your questions. I answer them on 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 YouTube and on the podcast. You know, just um, it is a fun way to collaborate, if you will, with with a lot of a lot of people around the around the world. Actually, the questions are coming from everywhere, so it's interesting. That's great. So it's that's interesting. Great. Uh, and then, if you want, I can bring up the other thing, which I think is is incredible. Uh, BJJ fanatics, uh, you have your own little uh, video out there now. Uh, and I think it's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> Gravity is your friend. Um, set up guard sweeps. And that's available now at BJJ Fanatics. Yeah, I just talked to guys at uh, BJJ Fanatics over the weekend. And they said the video is doing phenomenal. There's a good positive response behind it. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe we will have the opportunity to do one more. Um, future will, will, will tell. But until then, enjoy this. Let me know if I can help in any, um, in any way from a sit-up perspective. It was, it was a lot of fun to film with the... Um, or BJJ Fanatics guy. So um, take a look at it. That's good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Should we get started? Absolutely. Well, you know, normally I would say Master Mauricio Gomez is in the house, but it, it, we were told that not to not to call you Master. So uh, Mauricio <laughs> is in the house. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Um, it, it's, so we hear yeah. that you just came from Brazil. I did. I, I was a month there with my, I went to see my my kids and my mother. She's 92. 92. And um, 92 years old. The women in the family go to 100, not the men. Not the men. But she's doing all right. She had, uh, she has obviously 92 years old, some health issues, what have you, but she's, she's all right. And I could, you know, I, I, I went there for a very specific reason. I wanted to spend time with her and my kids that are there. And that's exactly what I did. I went to the academy like three or four times, and that was about it. Because we live in front of the beach, in the beach, in Ipanema. So just go to the beach in the morning and hang out with her the rest of the day. And that was, that was priceless. That was really good. We're, we're very, uh, and, you know, very heartwarming. It was good. It was a good thing to do. Well, and I feel re- really good about it. Well, good for you. I mean, it's today yeah. how life is very busy and, and sometimes it's very difficult for us to find the personal time to spend with our family and you talking about going to Brazil. So fe- exactly. fabulous. fabulous. Yeah. I, I waited ne- nearly a year for that because of all these COVID restrictions and everything else. But I managed to do it and, I'm, and it was a, a happy month. Very happy month. Well, welcome back. Not, welcome yeah. back. <laughs> welcome back to the cold. Three o'clock in the afternoon and it's dark. <laughs> it's, very, it's very difficult to get used to that. <laughs> but you, you've been, you know, obviously you reside in the UK at this point. Um, you have, um, you know, part of a very successful academy. 
Um, but share with us how how are things in Brazil? How we used to be things in Brazil? I mean, you you've been on the map for for decades at this point. Um, yeah. You're one of the pioneers of of what we see today. But things have changed over the over this, the, that time, hasn't it? Well, yeah. With time, things changed. Things uh, uh, became different, and just it's just it's just the growth that that's unbelievable. The growth of of that jujitsu had, you know, we we sort of saw a bit of it in the nineties after Hoist did the UFC and everybody got curious about what's that groundwork. Let's, let's try to learn that. And after that, it, that opened the doors to, to a lot of things that happened around the world. You know, with, at that, that time came pride and, mm-hmm. and, and the academies throughout the entire globe slowly went from one continent to the other. And nowadays that, it's like a, it's like a pharmacy. There's one in every corner. Almost, There's yeah. gyms all all over the place, and it's so gratifying. You know, I, I, you can never expect something like this, not in this volume. You know, because it's it's huge. It's huge. I have friends here in the UK, and they are martial artists, true martial artists, and all of their academies today have, today, you know. From some years to now, they have jujitsu, and it's a big part of their gym. Even though they're black belts and, and gurus in other martial arts, jujitsu became like a big part of everyone's gym. There's it, always a, a little place there. There's a mat, and they're, they're, that's where they do their their groundwork. Do, do, and, when you look back, yes. when you look back, you know, thirty, forty years ago. Um, when jiu-jitsu was not as present. Have you ever imagined that would get to this point? Um, no, no, no. We, we, we know that we always knew, and I always believed that it would be, you know when you have a really good, you can't call it a product, but you know when you have a really something special, and man, this would be, I'm sure that this would people would love this, and they did. And it's not it's not only it, it, in the beginning it was oh let's go there because we want to learn groundwork and you have you had guys from other martial arts they're already uh, black belts in their own uh, things and they wanted to desperately learn what to do on the floor, and that was very uh, in the beginning that was mostly what it was. But and then the uh, the the major you know the public itself wanted started to, to learn the the jiu jitsu and what what jiu jitsu brings to to people you know the camaraderie the the friendship the the feeling good about being in a gym where you you're there you're learning how to fight you're learning how to protect yourself you're doing a, a an activity, a physical activity, but there's also, and it's a big part of it. It's the social as- aspect of of what you found in the jiu-jitsu brotherhood gym, you know? And that's one of the things that through the entire 2020 year of all those lockdowns and stuff, I think a lot of people, they didn't miss only going to the gym and getting fit. They could do that running around their house or, or running around in a park or they can keep up with the physical activity, but the social aspect of it, you know, the camaraderie, you're, 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 you're fighting each other. You're trying to beat each other up. But at the same time, there is that, uh, I can't put my finger on it, but it's the brotherhood and the, the I keep saying that again. But it's what it brings. I'm sure you you experience that in your gym and in other other jujitsu gyms that you go to, and that you know that aspect of being comfortable in a fighter's environment. If you can, yeah, no, you absolutely catch right. Catch what I mean. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and I think jujitsu is one of those unique 
activities, hobbies, wh- whatever you want to call it, where this this bond is so strong. Yes. Like you don't see anywhere else. At least I haven't seen, seen no. it anywhere else. Why no, do you, you think you that happens? Have, it, it, and you hear that from other martial artists of other uh, gyms and other, he said, we only find this here in Jiu-Jitsu. I don't know why. I don't know why. Maybe because, I don't know. Do you think it's possibly, well, well, uh, I, I feel like Jiu-Jitsu is a more intimate martial art than than anything else. And I don't know if that intimacy, that, that clo- physical closeness has something to do with it. Maybe. It's a very close contact martial art. That's why sometimes you got to watch out not to get hurt. Some, uh, you, the, the classes are divided in, 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 uh, levels to make the instructor's job a bit easier. And, um, maybe that's it, but also the fact that you, you don't win every day. Some days you, you, you think, uh, you were you were the boss the day before, and that day you got nowhere. You know nothing nothing worked or something went wrong, and then you got to go back to the drawing board and ask and may and and that you know that thing that you have with your training partners, guys. I I can't figure this out. How do you do this? Some people do it differently because we are all different. We are all different sizes. We're we're where we like to do things different. And that aspect of everyone's life translates itself on the on the mat. You know, if he's more aggressive, he will be more aggressive. If he's more passive, he will be a little bit more passive. But that's okay. He, it, it, he, the, people aren't the same. We, we're different sizes. We, we like to do things differently. And... And sometimes a position works very well for one, but you have to adapt it a little bit for another person. There are some bits and pieces that you can do to help. And that's why I like it so much. I like the challenge of teaching the beginners and people that are starting up to up to blue belts and purple belts. That that's that's what I really, really enjoy. You know, because the gym has like six instructors plus me and Roger, or four, maybe five with me and Roger. So, you know, you have the young guys there that can teach whatever they want. You know, they're, they're competitors, they're, they're different people. But my my thing is, how can I get a guy that just got through the door to actually take somebody down or mount and or avoid the mount or avoid an attack and start moving their hip properly and uh, that's a challenge you know some people it, it's not it's not very natural <laughs> We're, we 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 twist twist and and turn and all of a sudden there's somebody with a, with his chest on your face and making you look the other way you, you got to figure out a way you know okay wait a minute it's a bit uncomfortable how do I get out of this? You know, what can I do? You got a muscle bench press a guy, throw him on the wall? That's not going to work. It can work for a very strong sh- guy, but what about the weak ones, right? Because that's initially that's what it was for. But it's, uh, I don't know if you guys, let, I'll start talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, we no, love listening. Yeah. That's why we're not, not even interrupting you. But you yeah, bring up. I'm a, really sorry. No, no, no you're, you're fine. Good. Fine. Please do. Please do. But you bring Stumped. up some important points. You know, you win, you lose sometimes. But of the fact, just I just recently finished half hour ago. I finished a class and I was talking to one of the students. And he was sharing that one, some days he's happy and he leaves the academy and he's empowered and he feels that he's accomplished a lot. And other days he feels just like a, almost angry. Like today was just a rough day. Like I couldn't figure it out. They get frustrated. Yeah. And it's normal. It's normal. And that's, it's up to us because they look at us right. for the answers, right? Like, well, uh, uh, how many, I've heard so many, I'm going to give up. I'm not going to train anymore. I'm not going to do this anymore. And you just look at, no, you're not. Yes, you are. And I'll see you tomorrow. And then we'll work on what your difficulties are. 
Oh, but I have this. That's not a problem. You know how many times I've done this before I could get it right? It takes, sometimes it takes years. It doesn't matter. You know, you can't expect the white belt to mount somebody and roll around and fall back with an armbar. They get taught that, but they'll only use that maybe what? When they're three stripe blue belt or something? Yeah. Have you seen any white belt get another white belt with a flash star bar from the mouth? Very difficult. Very rare. So people have to understand that it, there are, will be awesome days. Oh, man, today I won the mat. I won this. I did that. Everything worked. Nobody got me. Cool. Perfect. Next day, the crowd is different. People are different. There's a little one that, over there that, oh, I've got the little guy over there. And that little guy just creams you up, you know? <laughs> he does things to you that you you couldn't even imagine. But all of a sudden, he's on your back with his hand inside your neck, and oh, God, that's gone. And then you look at him and say, yeah, all right. This is Jiu-Jitsu, man. This is what we're here for, to learn to learn that, you know? Yeah, that and can't, that, that, that can't. That, that's the fun part, I think. You know, it, dealing, and... Again, you know, the role that we have in a gym as, uh, especially me that I'm a lot older than everybody else, a lot of people come to me with, with problems and those problems sometimes relate to the mat. Sometimes it doesn't. And then you, th you think jujitsu and you put that in their, in their lives and it becomes, look, let, let, let that go. You know, you know when you're holding on to a position for too long? And you like a, a triangle that's not working, right? You have a triangle, a guy in a triangle here. You know it's not working. You're you you're you're up from the outside. You said he should have let that go a while back. No, but he's insisting, insisting, insisting. He lost the triangle, lost the guard, and the guy's on his side. Why? Because he tried to hold on too long for something that wasn't his, and it wasn't there in the first place. Just learn to let go and deal with the, with the consequence that's going to happen straight after that. I mean, that is important part of what you're mentioning right now, knowing where to let go of, and I'm not even ta only talking about jiu-jitsu, but I just uh, life in general, but jiu-jitsu oh, yeah. relates, relates to life so often and so, 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 so powerfully. Everything, man, everything, you know, situations in life that you can see that, oh man, why are you insisting so much just... And it's not easy to learn to let go. It's not. We try to hang on. We think we have it, and you don't. And that's that's very rewarding to be able to point the person into the, the listen, try this next time. And then it comes to, it works. It's working. Oh, that's, how pleasant is that? No? <laughs> it's, really, it, it's really nice. Yes, it is. It's really nice. Is that something that you developed through jujitsu, or or is that something that you brought to jujitsu? Having that attitude of being able to let things go. Um, I think with my experience, I learned from both on the mat and off, and obviously you try to translate what you learn. Uh, you know, it's all information that you have, information that you catalog. You know, you have a, a wide range of archives in your mind about life and about things. And I can translate jujitsu to almost everything in my life today. I really, I really, really can. And I tried to, that, I to help people as much as I can with, with the knowledge and experience that I have. Actually, that's all I... I I have to give right. It's my experience. That's why I'm still there. Otherwise, I'll just become a another trophy in Roger's gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put it on the wall and let, let the. Is that what it go. is? <laughs> well, <laughs> you can try not to be. <laughs> you talk about uh, you know people coming and talking to you, asking you questions about life and about jujitsu. If you had to break it down, which one is more present? Is it the life questions or is it more of a jujitsu questions? Where do you find yourself most? 
Uh, it's mostly jujitsu questions. It's uh, yeah, the, the 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 people that you have you're more intimate with. There's there's always the ones that that are there every single day. You know, they train every single day. They find a little time to go to the gym, and others are more busier. And sometimes you you what you see is um, eh, problems that people have sometimes. Uh, things with the, with their kids or or with their jobs or with somebody that they have a problem with and you just try to help in, in, in any way you can really it's not I'm not trying to be anybody's uh, psychiatrist or, or anything like that so please don't put me in that category but <laughs> all, all, all I have is I'm older so I have a lot of experience. And if something that you you can help with some facts or, or what have you, they, they can, you know, translate to that occasion, situation, what have you, then fine. If not, we'll stick to the mat. That's what we know best, how to get out of stuff how to, <laughs> <laughs> and what to do to finish. Nice. <laughs> that's, well, that's the most important part. Well, that's awesome. The let, let's pivot this a little bit. Let, let's go back a couple of decades back. Do you remember your very first day on the mat? I I no. When I was a small child, no. I remember going to the academy with my father. Probably not the first day. I I remember being there. You have to understand, I'm nearly 70 years old, so that was a long, long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, and then there was a gym, because my father was a member of the first Gracie Academy in the Rio de Janeiro City Center. So that was the original uh, uh, Gracie Academy. And I remember going there with him. His teacher was a person called... Jean Alberto Bahilt, which I trained with him in my teens. He's still alive. He's a red belt, lives in Rio. He was friends with my father till my father passed away. And then he closed his gym because he went off to be uh, he like a sports psychologist. So he wanted to uh, go and help like try, work with football teams. So that was my kind of, I, I, I already knew what, where I wanted to go. And, and I actually couldn't because I wouldn't leave his gym just like that, you know, but I was still a white belt, even though I've been training for years. So this was in 1977. You guys probably weren't even alive. I was. And, <laughs> and then I joined Hall's Academy. Uh -huh. And th uh, there, I do remember my first day. Because he wasn't there. It was a Friday. It's funny how I'll never forget those. I got there on the Friday night. Carlos Gracie Jr. was teaching. Kylie used to put me to train with like three really tough guys, and I did I did okay. And that was it. We, we, we went home. It was Friday. Saturday, Sunday came. On Monday, when I got there, Halls was there. Kylie used to probably told him about me, and he put me to train with two more guys, and I did well. And then in the end of the class, he said, Mauricio, there's a competition on Saturday. It's a state competition. And you're fighting as a blue belt. So go to the shop tomorrow morning, buy yourself a blue belt, and you start using it as of tomorrow night. <laughs> and that, that would be Monday night. And I said, Halls, I haven't competed in ages. And it was like talking to a wall because he just, Saturday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah Saturday. <laughs> Saturday it is, and I was state champion, weight and absolute. Nice. That was really, really, really cool. 
And um, yeah. What was your feeling? Were, what was your feeling as you as you reflect on all of this? One, you you get a blue belt from essentially nowhere. Two, yep. you you know you go to compete. Was this your very first competition, or or? Yes, it was as an adult. Yes. So this is your yeah. first competition, and then you essentially clean the house. You you destroy everybody in your weight and absolute. And the absolute, yeah. It was interesting. <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting because I went there and said, "I'm going to get hammered," and I was so nervous because those initial competitions. You fought, obviously, uh, they're not as anywhere near as big as the ones that they have now or even back. It was just, uh, it weren't that many fighters. So you would have maybe two fights in your weight division, maybe three, and then another two or three in absolute. So it was over a weekend. It wasn't nothing major. Like Roger, for example, had to, all of his Weight divisions and competitions is usually four four on each. Four in the weight division, four in absolute. That's eight fights over Saturday and Sunday. Anyway, we had a lot less. But anyway, the the the, the one point I'm trying to get at: uh, all the competitions had a table, and the 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 the, the this table it was a bunch of uh, desks put together. And then came the mats. And on that table sat Carlos Gracie, Hélio Gracie, João Alberto Barreto, Álvaro Barreto, Mansur from Kyoto. These guys are, they were the guys that created jiu-jitsu for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. And you had to fight in front of them. <laughs> you had to do a good job. <laughs> No matter what. No pressure at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Paul's right, right there looking and shouting and yelling at us or what have you. If we made a mistake. Or... Did, did they did they yell at you? No, no. They they wouldn't say a word. Oh, they wouldn't say a word. No, 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 no. They were there just to watch the competition. It was a tradition for them to stay in those seats. like uh, and And they would watch everybody fight and and you would just bow to them or whatever but that was it there was no they wouldn't say a word no that that would always come from the sidelines it's so interesting when you're mentioning all these names i mean a lot of people probably listening to this that they don't even know half of those names right but they are essentially the pioneers of who what we do today these are the guys who literally created jujitsu or made it or built it at that time yes they did everything, yeah. We we came. We all came from from that table, mm -hmm. that table that yeah. was watching us fight in those initial championships. They they were the the men that created everything. The respect that you had for them was so great, and man, having. Fighting in front of them, and everybody will look to, uh, to them or what have you. And if you got like a, a smile from one of them or a good fight or something like that, oh, no, you'd be over the moon. <laughs> you'd be over the moon. There was a fight that I did uh, as a purple belt, and by then the competitions had gotten bigger. So that table, I, I think, in some places they didn't put any more. After a while, people, uh, they just filled with mats. They would be uh, on the sideline somewhere. And um, I fought a guy that uh, was beating everybody. And um, he is a very good friend of mine these days. He has a gym in uh, Los Angeles. No, Las Vegas. And um, Elio Gracie called my house that night to congratulate me on that fight. And I'll never forget that. He, ca he called me, he literally called me. He said, Marie, so I was very good. He said, you know when you're like a kid that you can't sleep? <laughs> <laughs> or even when I went to his house, because my wife at the time, Hala, Roger's mom, she was very, uh, we used to travel to with our kids 
they were small and Elu had a big house in Petropolis, Itaipava actually. And they had a set of mats or even the, the Carlos Gracie house in Teres office with, they always have mats. We always trained. I trained with Edu there a couple of times. And looking back, it was like, you know, it's time like that, that you'll never get back. And it was so special. And you didn't think much of it at the time, you know? Like like you don't when you're young and you're going through things in your life. And But in this case, it's it's like, a, you know, the profession that, that we chose and... Um, it's all linked back, but not not that back. You know, that it's right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Edu and, and Carlos and João Alberto Barreto and Edu Vigio and these guys were Carson. Oh man, mm. caramba! Carson was a, <laughs> Carson was an amazing guy, man. He was so funny, so nice. Yeah, and I had I had privilege. You know, meeting him and really studying Did under, you? under Carson Senior. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Until He's I was a blue belt, you know, I, w- yeah. I was under him, and what what, what a great an person. Guy. Mm-hmm. We but, were in in Carlos Gracie's house once, and it was after one of these competitions, what have you, and and they were having an argument about a position, and and um, I don't remember what it was exactly, what, but it was I think a defense against a double leg situation, and. Carson was so strong, and I wasn't not I, I wasn't a small guy, probably ninety kilo guy, but well built. And he was talking to Halls about it, and he, he said, "Come here, man." So he made me do position. So he picks me up and he holds me up in the air with one hand, talking to <laughs> to, to, to. And I was just, I was just up there. I said, "What the? F- <laughs> <laughs> the guy's strong as hell." Okay, you can put me down. Now. <laughs> and they were just talking about a a situation. Oh man, that was funny. That's great. Uh, then I realized how how you know the built of Car- Carson because I was I trained with Halls even though at the time they shared the gym in the same building. You know they had uh, it was a two two story building and. Uh, we had we would have the the big bats upstairs on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Carson would have downstairs Tuesday, went Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and um, so we didn't really we only met passing through, or they were there every day, but I didn't act. Sometimes Tuesday and Thursday we had the very small mat, and um, Car- Carson was always there. And um, his son, Kassim, at the time, was just a kid. And um, that was great times. You're talking great about time, a lot of yeah. you talking about a lot of those memories, especially with Helio and 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 you know a lot of the other guys. But what, can you walk us through one of the days when you actually trained with Helio? You were at his house, at his at his at his ranch, and and you know what what, what was it like? Wow, oh, man, it, it was. I went. I didn't. I went there a few, a couple of times, two, three times with my wife, and one of the times Halls was there. Helson was there too. But anyway, he had he had the mat, and um, I this was totally unexpected because we finished breakfast and we were talking. He had. It was amazing that he had collected a newspaper from all, from everything that came out in the news about the Gracie family. Uh, But at the time, the Gracie family was Carlos, him, George, and Gaston, and and, and Carson's fights. So he had clips, a, a clipboard, like big, and you would go through them. And you would see, I think that's when I actually realized that, you know, they were so, so famous uh, that Ed had fights in a, in the main foot, football stadium of, of Rio, which is called Maracanã. Um, how can I refer that? Um, 
uh, it's like him fighting in in the Yankee Stadium in New York, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, uh, that's that's how big Jiu Jitsu was in, in in the beginning in Brazil, and and he couldn't walk from here to the corner without being stopped and people wanting. You know, there weren't so many cameras back then, but it was more like you had to get close and ask for an autograph. Mm-hmm. Nobody walked around with cameras in, in, in the 40s, 50s, or whatever. This only came a lot. That's why not, we don't have that many fights of us around. There's only one black and white fight of mine on YouTube with me and Peshot. It was a final fight of... Uh, final uh, fight of... Uh, the uh, open division, absolute. And I won my black belt the very next day. This was in November, 1991. Yeah. I, I want to, yeah, I'm yes, sorry. Ma'am. I just, I was, I was wondering, you know, you said something a little bit earlier and I don't know if we can go back to that. Um, you talked about true martial artists and uh, it's been sticking in my head you yes. know, we're talking about about Helio and and the rest of the family, Hulse and everybody. And I just wanted to know before we forget, um, what what does that mean to you? What is a true martial artist to you? A guy. Well, a true martial artist to me is, and I know a few, not many, a guy that he. You look at him in his gym and and his his qualifications and and his mentality, and he is like a samurai. He 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 knows his faults, obviously, but all of his folks focus is directed nowadays in in, in his teaching, in in passing the knowledge that he absorbed throughout all those years. And now he's passing it on in a very, very distinct way. For example, uh, he, anybody that goes to his gym and we, we do the same with jujitsu. You don't, you don't want to join a martial arts gym and get beaten up on your first class or, 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 all of a sudden you, you get you get a kick to your face or, or or something that will harm you uh, not sometimes not because the guy was clumsy or because you had a bit of attitude and he had you know to put you in 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 your place it, it's it's what you pass through you know the that aura that you have that you no know, this this is me. This is what I do. I'm here to pass this information to you, and you're serious. You're 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 not fooling around. You're not there to harm people, or or you're you're there to to pass on those teachings in such a bright and brilliant way that it's difficult to explain. But you can you can feel it. You see, I, I've known a few, and they are for me, what I call true martial art. It's not a guy that's in their gym and he's just a bully. He just beats people up. And Who's the one the point? Who's the one true martial artist on the top of your list? Here in the UK. Anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah, well, there are several. I can't, I can't tell you this is number one, but here there's Rick Young, for example, he's a one true martial art. Mark Walder is another one. There's Kevin Chan. There's Bob Breen. There's so many. They these guys are on top of my list here. I might forget one or other, but I consider these guys. You know, they're bl- black belts and loads of different kinds of martial arts. Would you consider yourself and, as a true and martial jiu-jitsu. artist? I think I am. I try. 
I, I try. I try very hard. I I I do. Uh, uh, con I have a very very serious uh, way of looking at my job, my what I do, and how I teach. What's the best way to? I'm always concerned about getting better or learning something that will help that one or this one a little bit more or what can I do to build that person's confidence that he doesn't have any. Some people come to your gym and man, they're, they're barely surviving. You know, they're, they have, they're very shy or they can't do anything. So, and, and you see a, a lot of that in jiu-jitsu because it's very, it's very close. So sometimes people are not used to this closeness, you know? They, they're used to distance. Mm -hmm. You can see that a lot, especially in Western countries. You, you don't go around hugging people. Oh, give me a hug. It's very Brazilian, you know? Very, uh, yeah, we do that a lot. And some. To some people, that's a bit. Whoa, what are you doing? You're too close. We we recently had somebody on the on the show, one of the guests, and and he was sharing a conversation with his students, and he asked the student, "Is what's the biggest thing that you learned in in, in jujitsu on the mat?" And the student responded, "I learned how to hug people. I guess I I was never mm -hmm. comfortable with it, and now I can hug people." Yeah, yeah, and it it is interesting, you know, it is because you're 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 passing that that secret barrier that everybody has. So, oh, this it's like when you'd make a friend, right? When you're protecting yourself, your friend. So this is my, my space. You can't enter here. This, this is no go zone. Remove that. And you can, all right, it's not time to fight. It's like, uh, go get a big hug. Give a nice <laughs> firm, firm hand, handshake. Yeah. It's sometimes, yeah, that's all there is needed. Sometimes it, I've seen this happen in the gym. The, exactly what you said. I came here today just to get a hug. All right. <laughs> 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 that's, that's all right. <laughs> what what are phenomenal stories? Um, you know, we talked about the deep history way back in seventies on the beginning of your journey. I, oh, I, you were asking me. I'm sorry to interrupt go ahead. you. How it was that first day about Edu, and and I ended yeah, up, yeah. That, that, yeah, and I remember clearly, clearly, he was on the mat, he sat down, and I walked to the mat. He said, "Stop right there," I said, "Oh God, what have I done? <laughs> go back, go back outside." So I went outside. <laughs> now leave all of your strength exactly where you are. Okay. I'll come back in, and I, then then you could walk in. <laughs> <laughs> and I can totally well, imagine him actually saying this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And it was very straightforward in what he had to say. He, he would not hold back at all. So was it just you and him on the mat, or was it is it is a small class, this, or was it one on one? No, no. This time it was just me and him. Halls was there, but Halls was having breakfast in the kitchen. So we, it was just me and him and at Mount and he would, he, he would, he would, he would funny because he would, he would uh, shrink his, uh, shred his, his uh, uh, shoulders like that. He would hold both his geese, pull the geese down and lock himself like that. And then, okay, try to choke me. Obviously you couldn't because unless you had to open the gee here because he was pulling it down. So, you couldn't possibly slide your <laughs> fingers inside the lapel. So yeah, you, you kind of tried it and then you poof, he would bid you out and you would lose the, the mount or what have you. It was, and then we would develop into something else. It's interesting. Those very, had to be very, priceless yeah. moments. Oh, they are. I can still remember them as they were today. These things are in your mind for the, for the rest of your days. Did Always. you did you know the magnitude of of what was happening in that moment? I mean, many people would pay endless amount of money to meet Helio, let alone train with him. Yeah, having him make you breakfast. 
because he was <laughs> making his. Oh man, these these things are priceless. What did you have Carlos for breakfast? What did you have for breakfast I, with I, Helio? Oh, it was uh, papaya. We would mix <laughs> papaya with orange juice and a bit of cream cheese. It was very good. <laughs> and he would make a thing called tapioca, which is a. Uh, it's like a. How can I explain? Like a that? rice pudding. No, it's it's uh, salty. We uh, you would spread it, make it on the pan, and uh, it would be like a a round pancake, but very thin. It's made out of flour, and then you you that would you would change size, and it would be a little bit crusty, and you would pass like cream cheese or a bit of bit of honey, and fold it, and it would be like a triangle, and you would eat it. Oh, it's delicious! It's <laughs> delicious, yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> This is great stuff. What, 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 what amazing memories! Like I'm, I'm just you're like devouring right I used now. To, I could listen I to used, this all I day. I used to go. I used to go with them. They had a. I lived close to Carlos when I got married, and once a week, one of them had to go to the to the huge uh, market that we had in the suburbs, and then to buy fruit because. It was fruit for the whole, for the entire family, either one or the other. So Edu would buy the stuff for his house while Carlos would buy the stuff for his house. But Edu had uh, uh, Hardio and Helson and, and his uh, and other boys and Hicks and they all lived in the same house. And Carlos had Kahlius, Karadin, Kahla, Helion, Hela, Kihle, and uh, Kahla. It was six boys plus him and all this. So the amount of fruit that was bought were in nearly containers. So Carlos had a pickup where I used to help him put the stuff in the back and then help when we got home to help put the stuff uh, in the in the in the kitchen upstairs. And it was a very unique experience because Ed drove Real, real fast, <laughs> and he. But Carlos was very zen. He was very like he was go like he, he drove. <laughs> Once we were backing out of the the the, the, the shop because it was you parked your car. They would put the stuff in the back, and he gave a little back. And there was a car parked back, and he hit the car. Not nothing major, but he hit the car. And he looked at me. Was that car already there? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, not when we arrived, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But usually when they saw whose car was it, I, I think everything would be different. You know, they were, the Gracies were like royalty in Brazil. Uh, they, they had a big, they have big big name everybody knows them and back in the day everybody had gone to, or passed by some kind of academy or jiu-jitsu or, or theirs or one of somebody that was their student jiu-jitsu is very it's like in brazil it's very popular mm -hmm. now now it's all over the world but at that time yeah jiu-jitsu was very popular everywhere you Somebody had was doing jujitsu. Yeah, I have a question. We've had a lot of people on who who trained back then there. Um, how did they feel about their students opening their own academies? Because we hear so much about like you know tradition and and you don't train other places. Uh, how did how did Helio and, and Carlos feel about their students branching out and opening their own academies? There weren't that many, to be honest with you, but. It wasn't a problem, you know, if you were a black belt and you were moving on. With, I think till this day, it's very, very uh, selfish of somebody thinking that, oh, I'm going to create all these black belts and they're going to stick with me. They, they, they do. They're your friends for the rest of, the, of your life, you know. But because they want to open their own gym and go their own way or what have you i think it's a it's a normal thing to 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 do you know it's natural part of the Some, evolution 
Exactly. You get it's like you're going to the to a university, right? And you got your degree, you got your diploma. Now, what are you going to do with it? Oh, maybe I want to stick around and teach here, or maybe not. Maybe you want to move back to your country if you're not from that place, or maybe you just want to go and live somewhere else in some other city or what have you. And it's so normal. We've we've had so many in our gyms, people that came and and went, and it's it's part of it. You know, you make good friends and. Sometimes they, life pushes them in another direction, which you have to uh, consider that part of life. You know, it's, it's what it is, and 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 that's pure wisdom right there. I I wish that everybody had that perspective and that view. I think jujitsu community would be by far better. Um, we talked about a lot of histor- history way back, you know, in seventies and so on. You coming up, I want to pick your brain on one. Um, unique thing is, and and I'm referring to Roger. Um, I have three sons. Gary has father as well. What does it feel like to be a father of one of the greatest, if not the greatest, grappler ever? Well, I can guarantee you one thing: the first thing that you lose is your name. <laughs> You're no longer anyone. You're the guy's father. Yep. <laughs> oh, who's that guy? He's Roger's dad. <laughs> oh, c- come in, come and meet Roger's dad. <laughs> and that that was it for till for a long, 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 long time. But uh, just a joke. But it's it's true. But <laughs> man, it's it's uh, how can I say? It's it's an unbeatable feeling of you know it it gives you so much back you know after so many years working with something and I've seen other champions in the past you know Halls was one and and others came after him and Hanzo Hanzo is a huge influence in and our lives, mine and Rogers, and he dealing his Rogers uncle as well, man. And then Roger starts to compete, and and not only uh, the competition itself, but the way that he tried to win all of his fights, even though sometimes not successful because of some attempts or some mistakes by referees, what have it doesn't matter. The the feeling of having somebody reaching what my son reached, you know, is is overwhelming, is unbelievable. It's some of I have some of I, I, I tried to go to nearly all of his competitions and fights. Unfortunately some I, I wasn't there. And but uh, it's it's the feeling and, and to see you know your son doing what he did, achieving what he achieved. It's, I don't know, man. It's like winning these. It's like any other sport. You know the the guy's a he's a brilliant brilliant fighter. He. <laughs> He's just it's unbelievable. His technique and his, his finesse, you know, is very refined. Do you think that's something that he was born with? Is this a, a, a passion of uh, the amount of passion that he has for jujitsu, or maybe this is just the instruction that he got, or the work ethic? What, what do you think was the main contributor? I think it was a combination of everything you said. You know, first of all. You have to want, right? Without willpower, all the rest is not, is not. The willpower comes first. You have. To, I, I actually want that. And he told his mother once, and he's just. I think he won the the blue belt world world title. 
And he told his mother, I'm going to be the best fighter in the world. And he did. And then he won purple. He won brown. He won 10 in the black. Did some MMA fights. He did 10, eight successful, two not successful. And then he went on to fight Bushesh in 2017. Mm-hmm. And that crowned his uh, his legacy in a way that yeah, very I rem- few. I remember that fight, yeah. I just yeah, rewatched it. So. Very, very <laughs> few had, had could, was able to like, okay, this is me, I'm done. And, but this is my, this is my legacy. This is my last fight. He went in as, as an underdog and in seven minutes, he put the guy to sleep. Not, and that was amazing. It, it really was. This has to give you as a father, a huge sense of pride. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, undoubtedly. It's how he's going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame of the ADCC this year mm-hmm. with other athletes. And, man, that's that's a recognition that you thought, well, well done, Roger, you know? Good you, for you. Are you going to be there? I don't know. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I would like to, yeah. Let's see how it's very difficult to plan stuff these days. You now with all these, for sure, mm-hmm. all of us just you know these virus everywhere. Sometimes they close down here, close down there. we I'll 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 make that plan a little bit into the year. Let's see what happens as things get closer. No, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What do you think is the biggest point of satisfaction when it comes to? Roger and jujitsu, just in general, when it comes to you, for you particularly, do you have one thing that is really satisfying to you that you think that this this is huge? Now, yes. My biggest satisfaction now mm-hmm. is going to the gym and teach. That's my biggest motive to live. What is I'm so- in the gym every single day. What is so satisfying about teaching? Giving. You're giving something. I'm giving something that I was given to and made my life so much better and so much richer. And that's, that's what I like to pass. I mean, that's huge. Spoken like a true leader. Spoken like a... Samurai. No, just, <laughs> no, just that's extremely, extremely satisfying. You see somebody get better, go on to the ranks, got the blue belt or whatever, or getting, oh, a person that had, when they started, that had absolutely no confidence in doing anything. And now he's walking around the gym, he's full of friends, he's training. And, oh, that's satisfying. Changing people's lives for the best, for the good cause, you know? That's that's my satisfaction. Phenomenal. Beautiful. We've been at this uh, for almost an hour. Um, with the, oh, well. The, yeah, I know. Time flies, right? <laughs> you yeah. have some phenomenal stories. That's why. <laughs> yes. Well, the, I had a long life. <laughs> I'm going to ask you one more thing before before we uh, you know start wrapping this up. What is that? Do you have one best story when it comes to Roger? Like hands down, it comes up every time. It's just embedded in your memory. Yeah, it has to be so many. There is. I think some of them is in the beginning when uh, he was starting to win and win and um and he's he's so so damn calm that it's that is extremely annoying because <laughs> I I I would I get so uh, anxious and and nervous and you look at him and he's he's sleeping between fights and <laughs> <laughs> so 
with whoever was with me. Said, Roger's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> they called his name. I wake him up. <laughs> I'll just throw some water in your yeah. face at least. And he goes to the bathroom, throws water in your face, come back down, goes in, wind, comes back down again, and goes to sleep again. <laughs> and oh man, that that was something else. Yeah, Roger's funny about that. <laughs> he, 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 I think he manages to keep his all that he learned through the years to keep all that inside him and especially when when fighting in brazil in that small stadium and the noise of everybody on top of the fight like that i've no don't know if you've seen videos of the chizuka tennis club but oh my god man that was like a fighting in an arena with everybody around you nearly nearly on top of you and and you fight sometime most of the times the team of the of the and it was always like that since since I was fighting, it's usually everybody against the Gracie Academy. I don't know why. All the other teams team up against us. It was and with Roger was no difference. Everybody would team up against uh Roger. And that was a bit annoying. But it got it well, got better throughout. But, per but perhaps that's what gave him the drive and the passion to achieve the things that we, he has. Maybe it did. Maybe it did. Yeah. Maybe it did. And he's had some beautiful wins. My God. Oh, he yeah. sure has. He yeah. Sure has. Listen, before we wrap this up, um, it's at the end of each episode, we have um, what we call five rapid questions. We have five, five qu very quick questions. If you don't mind... Uh, first thing that comes to your mind, um, just fire away. Some of them are funny, some of them are more serious, but it always int it creates an interesting end to the conversation. And 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 yeah. Gary's going to take a lead on that. Yeah, and it's funny um, knowing your history, and about. yeah, some of it you've already talked about. Knowing your history, um, I've also I've had to modify these. A bit. Uh, because how do you ask somebody, even though we did it already uh, when they were four, what was it like the first time you stepped on the mat? So I changed that up a little bit. And um, what has been your most memorable moment on the mat? And it doesn't matter My if it's, memory. yeah, if it's you, you and your competition or teaching or, or Roger, or anything, anything that comes to mind. My most memorable moment. If, well, you would have to split that in two. If you would ask what was my most memorable moment on the mat, I would say that was the first day that I met Halls in his gym on that Monday and that he told me I could go and buy a blue belt and compete on that. <laughs> For me, that was more than the, than the black belt because the black belt, I knew that I had to win that championship to, in order to get it, so I was going to get it anyway. And we didn't have any, uh, like, uh, he wouldn't s stop the class to do that. On Monday night, he just gave me the belt. Oh, you can uh, change that belt, put the black one down there. So uh, I think that most, Mel, for me, it would be that first day that I started training with, with Halls and other days like that were in incredible. And I would say in Roger's training, sessions i would probably pick one of the one of the sessions at henzo's academy in new york where he was training for his abu dhabi no gi in 2005 and he was on fire roger that that week he was unbeatable he went into that competition we knowing that oh my god it's gonna have to be somebody really good to win him and he did his eight fights submitting everybody on that on that weekend and that was that was memorable yeah that's incredible really is um question number two comes from a listener named tony and uh, he was wondering what are some of the areas of your focus as you've been getting older so during your training as you're getting older have you been changing surviving up <laughs> Tony surviving. Number one. Number one. Pick 
pick your training partners really, really nicely. You won't want a clumsy blue belt with 120 kilos trying to smash your guts in. No. So I, tr- I pick my training partners very wisely. Nice. Uh, and what we talked about a while back, learn to let go. There are certain positions that are just not worth trying to hold on to that. It's lost. You're going to get hurt. Like, just let go. Just let go. Like some situations, for example, I'll give you a very, very easy example. Half guard, top half guard. You get, people get nervous. They get anxious and they want to get out of there anyway and they twist their knee and puff. That's it. Six months on the trot. So you're, 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 you're in trouble. So those two things for me is vital, vital. It's train, pick your training partners very, very wisely. And uh, if you have some injuries, address it, you know, don't, don't let it get worse because it's not going to get any better and learn to let go. Let go. Sage advice. Um, Number three is, have you ever wanted to quit? No. Never. Maybe, Not even one time. Maybe. Never crossed your mind. Oh, it did when Halls died, yeah. Mm-hmm. It took me a while to get back. It took me a while to get back. I couldn't find a gym that would that I felt comfortable. It took a while. You- and I went to, to a few. But it was very, very, very difficult. That had to but be eventually, hard. Eventually I did. And... um and I never stopped again. Every time, obviously, there's certain times in your lives where you're either too busy doing something else, or or you're sick, or some, have pro- family problems, or work is too too much, and you can't go to the gym uh, to train. There's several factors that sometimes they come in the way, but mostly, I think no, because. <laughs> Even even when you're completely out of shape, you know that you think, oh, I'm going to get into shape and I'm going to go back to the jiu-jitsu. Wrong. Don't do that. Go back to jiu-jitsu. That will get you into shape. Just mm-hmm. just, just tell, talk to your instructor. Talk to him about, listen, I haven't done much. He'll know what to do. He'll know how to help you. Oh, you're going to train with him today. You're not going to do much today. Oh, I'm a bit tired. Fine. Put your back on the wall. Watch the rest of the class. You're good to go today. Come back tomorrow. That's uh, that's, that's great. Is a, that your is wisdom. Great. Um, yeah. So you've talked about how you got your black belt. It was just go get it. You know, you won. Go get it. You can wear it tomorrow. Uh, 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 but how yeah, did the, the black belt? He actually had it in his hand. Oh, he did. Oh, get he it. Did. Okay. Yeah, because a friend of ours, he had just come back from Japan, and he brought back two. Uh, Mizunogi uh, belt mm-hmm. from that from the shop, and he, he gave Halls t- two of them. Halls kept one, and he gave me one. Nice and yeah. So I still have it. What were your feelings uh, when he gave it to you? To be honest with you, I was an extremely excited that okay, I got my black belt. It probably lasted like five minutes, mm-hmm. and that was it. Just get back to it. Go back training. Nah. Nothing, nothing really to it. You're it not, just a black belt now. You're not a first person from the older generation who says literally the same thing. We have several who said, some of them said they didn't even get the physical belt. It was more like, hey, go just, you're a black belt now. Go get it. Go, go, go figure it out. Go buy one. You know, and I feel like there's so much more emphasis on that black belt today. I think what happens nowadays is that I think to value the the that achievement that that student has that he put so much effort into it because shujutsu is not easy we have to admit that it's, it's hard it takes a long time for you to get up the ladder you know mm-hmm. and by the time you get your black belt it probably took you a long time. What, seven, eight, nine, ten years, or even more, twelve, 
if you're if you didn't train regularly or some people take longer because they were away or what have you that's a long time to get your belt so yeah today we do the gradings and the black belts go up there and do their they do their speech they acknowledge what how they got there and i think the importance of that is to the to the other students you know in my time there was hardly anybody in the gym anyway. Maybe there were 10 or 15 of us there training. And, oh, you got your back. Well, so what? I'm going to smash you tomorrow. That was the feeling. That, yeah. <laughs> it didn't matter much. No matter what you knew. Because uh-huh. uh, there was a purple belt right there, really angry. I'm going to get you tomorrow. Said, oh, yeah, yeah. Congrats on your black belt. I'm smashing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, tomorrow you're mine. <laughs> something, something like that. And yeah, and today what I saw this this Saturday, we gave three black belts, and one of them said something uh, to uh, he addressed the the students in a way, guys, hang hang on there, hang in there, keep training. If you get injured, address it, come back, what have you. Don't stop because this is where I am now. I got my black belt, and they're so proud to have that wrapped around their waist, you know? And, and yeah, I think it's part of it. It's, it's nice to have that. It's really nice to acknowledge that the effort of that person for so many years. And you recognize that in front of all the other students that, oh, my God, yeah, I can do it too. He got it, so can I. That's I great. think it's like a bit of inspiration. It is. Know, it's very for inspirational for, for everybody, everybody else. else. Yeah, beautiful. Sure. Um, you said you still have the belt that Hals gave you. Do you still wear it? Yeah. Do you still no, wear it? I no. N- I never wear it. Where's it at, if you don't mind me asking? It's, it's, it's in Rio at my mother's house. Is it packed away yeah. on display? Yeah. No, no, no. It's packed away in, in, a, in a box. Yeah. What if, I never did anything with it funny, but it's still there. Maybe Roger, when I die, maybe he'll do something with it. Well, I, <laughs> I think the fact that it's just still there means a, it says a lot, mm-hmm. right? That you, that, you know, it's, it's there, uh, oh, you know yeah. where it is. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. So that's important. I what? had some of my friends that as the coffin was going down, they threw their belts on it because we were wearing keys and I, I am, I actually, untied mine and said no this is the only thing i have that you know that he gave me i, I ain't giving that away no so i kept it that's great good for you yep. that is wonderful wonderful what a phenomenal conversation thank you uh, i mean so many stories like i don't even know where to anchor myself i'm not going to sleep tonight as i'm thinking about this conversation <laughs> listen thank you for being here thank you for 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 devoting this it was, hour. A, nice, it was a nice talk I, I hope you guys liked it uh, absolutely oh, we, we loved, loved it, it. We it loved was it. this was phenomenal I get, I get carried away or whatever oh, <laughs> no. No, no 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 we love stories believe us Thank you for thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing all the wisdom with us, all the stories. If anybody wants to reach out to you, what's the what's the best way to find you? I mean, your academy is in UK with Roger. Um, but on social media, how can yeah, listeners get a hold that, of you? That Mauricio Gomez BJJ thing on Instagram, and that's about it. Yeah. Or just pop into the gym in London. I'm there every day. Listen, I <laughs> listen. Your academy is on my bucket list. Okay, it's a long well, way from Chicago, but I'm just saying, one day I am popping in. So you might have a visitor. We have we have two guys from Chicago in the gym. Oh no! Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll tell them tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. Well, thanks. let's let's wrap this up for today. Again, thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing their stories, and we are hoping to see you soon. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Me. Take care. Peace. It was a pleasure. It Thank was you. ours. All ours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Raw Radio. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care.